Ladies, gentlemen, and Haradrim of all ages, as of this point in Diablo 4's Season 2, a lot of us are hitting the higher levels. A good number of people are already capped as I would be too if I didn't split my time between two characters. And with the additions to the game last week, in the form of the malignant unique rings, it has sort of changed and slightly freshened up the gameplay for a few of the classes, and as such, a lot of people are simply looking for something to do once they've already done all the leveling that they want, once the builds are mostly set in stone, and honestly, even before that, this is something that you probably should consider doing, which is farming Juriel, the new uber boss for the endgame, the one who has a decent drop chance on a bunch of really strong uniques, and around a 2% drop chance on uber uniques as well, which is absurdly high for how strong those items are. That last part is why high level people really want to farm him, but even those who are earlier on who are capable of taking it on or finding a group should try their best to do so, because every piece of gear that he drops is guaranteed to be 925 item power, which means this is the quote unquote easiest way to acquire your best possible weapons, if nothing else else, though it's also great for things like bonus maximum life rolls, or thorns on armor, things like that of course. All that said, there is a really large portion of the player base currently active that basically just wants to do nothing but farm Duriel if possible. So let's talk about the most efficient ways to farm Duriel faster, more frequently, and with less time investment required. We're going to do this in any sort of order because of course the first step involved in doing Duriel runs is getting the required materials to summon him, which means killing Varshan and also killing Gregoire. Varshan is easy to kill because he just needs to do Whispers of the Dead to get his summoning materials, which often doubles up with other activities like Blood Harvest anyways, or even Helltide, which you also need to do, and B Grigoire can be quite annoying to get spawns for because, well, he is the one that relies on you doing Helltides. And it only gives you a limited number for each Helltide that spawns, and Helltides aren't open constantly, which means that you just have to do a lot of waiting, honestly. But the thing is, there are a couple of tricks for that. The first is less effective, but also applies to all players. If you have an alt, you can of course run the same Helltide a second time on a second character. The boss materials in this season are transferable throughout the stash so that you can just get the living seal chests on one character, then do it on a second character, and you can get twice as many mats per helltide by just putting them on the same character in the end. The really efficient version of this, though, happens if you are a console player and was found by Reddit user Grumpy Svalln. Console Diablo 4 has a local co op function that works in quite a strange way. You can attach a second controller, you have to make it use an actual different account on your actual machine, but it still uses the same copy of the game, so you don't have to pay for it again or anything like that. You just have to make a new character, and for some reason the default way that co-op works has the second player automatically follow the first if no input is detected. Bring the alt through the capstone dungeons and then head to Helltide. Have the alt die and then run away from them killing mobs and picking up cinders, leaving the dead one over in the corner. Local co-op has another interesting interaction where because you're looking at the same screen, the loot that you see is for both players, but no matter who picks it up, it goes to the inventory of the person it technically dropped for. What this means is you are picking up all these cinders at a normal drop rate for one person, you stay in the same reason as your dead buddy or you'll stop working, but what it does is also pick up cinders for the dead person, which doesn't make sense in theory, but again it's something to do with how local co-op works, because once you reach 300 cinders what you want to do is go to your way to the living steel chest, kill the enemies around it, teleport back into town. This will automatically revive the co-op player and when they come back to life, they will have essentially the same number of cinders as you do, because it doesn't count them as looting those cinders until they actually are alive again, which means that they don't lose it for dying, which you would normally if you're just walking around on like a level 5 in World Tier 4 Helltide. And because the Helltide chests are still unique to each player, even in co-op, you can open it once on each character, meaning in the same time that you normally would farm 300 cinders, you instead farm 600, and you can double the amount of chests that you would actually open, and thus the rewards that you get per each Helltide. Yes, it is a bit of a hassle, but that is still a lot of increased speed for anyone willing to do that, as it just means you get twice as many Gregoire summons per Helltide. Secondary to that, then we have, well, Trade Chat. It may seem obvious, but maybe some people have had it turned off for ages and not really thought about it, but there are people willing to sell the materials to summon Duriel in the trade chat for gold if you want. They'll often be actively saying it and you can respond to them, but you can always just ask out into the void and see if someone's interested. With gold gain being so high this season, you can choose to use some of this to speed up your farming process a bit if you really want to, but be wary of people trying to scam you always. Never do a trade in multiple instances, never do anything that seems confusing, just make sure it's always just straight up easy. Make sure it is the direct gold for the goods, anything other than that is shady, so be careful, but this is a good way to get more materials fast for a bit of a price if you have some to spare, and whether you want to or not is entirely up to you. With that then, you should have your materials one way or another. Are there any ways to improve your odds or efficiency from that point forwards? Well, your biggest trick is a called a Durial Rotation, which is also honestly an avenue to get Durial kills if you're too weak to solo it as well, if you're a bit earlier in the leveling process. But the point here is that soloing Durial is simply a mistake, honestly, no matter what. There is inherent value to doing this 
this activity as a full group. Every time Duriel dies, he drops all of his goodies for everyone in a party, but every time he is spawned in, it takes only materials from one person, meaning that it is pure gain for every one of these people to work together. The idea of a Duriel rotation then is simple. You find a group of people that all have some Duriel summoning materials. An easy way to do that is joining our own Discord, which is in the description of this video down below. We have pretty constantly active Duriel rotation groups, there's always people asking, or another way to do this is simply by using the trade chat in game, once again, if you want to, or honestly even just heading outside the cave where Duriel spawns himself and having a local chat with the people hanging outside to see if you can find some people. The idea of a Duriel rotation then, if it wasn't overly obvious, is pretty simple. You rotate spawns from person to person within a group of four, which in a way makes it so every spawn that you have as a personal individual is just you, your spawns, can be exchanged to fight Duriel four times instead of the normal one by doing this and rotating person to person with these other players. And all it takes is a little bit of social interaction, not even all that much. This is by far the biggest efficiency spike there is when it comes to farming Duriel more often, as it's literally just four times effectiveness. That's about it then as far as normal stuff goes, but it is worth mentioning that at two different points this season, there were exploits in the game where people could uh, actually duplicate these summoning materials, which technically is an efficiency trick, I suppose, so I figure I should mention that it did exist, but this this also is obviously against the terms of service, so maybe a trick too far, let's say, as it has gotten trading as a whole shut down twice this season for multiple days. All in all though, of course, a lot of players do want to farm Duriel, and while most people are doing it about as fast as they can, or at least as fast as they think they can, I wanted to make sure that as many people as possible are aware of any of these tips for getting even more, as as the days move forward, there are two real ways to keep progressing in some manner. The first is to level an alt, and the second is to fight Duriel enough that you get an uber you need to completely transform and increase your power before the Abattoir of Zir activity drops in early December so that you can just absolutely trash that place all the way up to tier 25, because that is the goal, right? You want to have the power fantasy of taking on the most difficult activity in the game and making it look like child's play. And what easier way to do that than to have a Shaco and the Doombringer and anything else you could possibly want, which of course requires you to farm as much Juriel as you can. And the fun thing is, hey, you can actually sort of work towards both of these goals simultaneously, as once you reach world tier three on an alt, you can just actually level th exclusively through Whispers of the Dead and also Helltide, which will level you a bit slower, sure, but not by a massive amount these days in Nightmare Dungeons, and if you use the Blood Harvest for Whispers 2, it makes it even faster. And the beauty of this is it will just farm Varsham and Grigoire materials almost automatically, which you can then use to farm Duriel even more and get more chances at the drops that you're actually after here. I hope you've all enjoyed this then, and hopefully I had at least something to share with you that you hadn't thought of when it comes to increasing the speed and frequency of Duriel murdering. And hey, if you have any bonus tips to share with anyone else, feel free to share them in the comments down below. Another quick mention that our Discord is linked in the description of this video, with Jurial rotations happening pretty frequently in our Diablo chat channels. So if you are looking to join a community to actually do this type of thing, and also find players to join up with just in general, this is a pretty good reason to check it out. In any case, like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye